Hello and welcome back to Easy English with James. Today we're going to have a look at the letter D. This is part of my A to Z series teaching you pronunciation for all of the letters of the English alphabet. Today we're going to focus on the letter D. Now, how many ways are there to pronounce this letter in English? Stick with me if you want to find out, okay? Okay, the letter D. The letter D is the third consonant letter in English after the letters B and C. If you want to learn about the letters B and C, click in the description box below. You'll find a link to the lessons on those two letters. Okay, D is the third consonant and as you have just heard, it is pronounced in the alphabet as D, D, A, B, C, D, D. Using the IPA, we can see that it looks like this. D, and then an I, and then those two little dots. D, D, the D and the E sound, D. Okay, so how many ways are there to pronounce this letter in English? The answer is there are three ways to pronounce this letter in English. Let's look at the first and the most common way. As you probably know, the most common way to pronounce this letter is as a D, D, D sound, okay? D, D. You'll know this from words like dad or dog or do, okay? Okay, so how do we make the D sound? Take your tongue, the tip of your tongue, put it behind your teeth on something called the alveolar ridge. It's the same place that we make the letter T sound, the T sound, and build pressure, okay? Imagine that there is air that you want to get out of your mouth, but your tongue is stopping that air, and you're building pressure, and then you release. The difference between the D and the T is that with the T, there is no sound from your vocal cords. You're not using your vocal cords. With the D sound that we're looking at today, you use your vocal cords, okay? The sound begins here, like that, and then D, 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 okay? So vibrate your vocal cords, build pressure, and release. D, D, D. If you don't use your vocal cords, you will make a sound, okay? They are nearly the same, the only difference is those vocal cords. Remember, tip of your tongue on the alveolar ridge, that's the thing behind your teeth, here, vibrate and d, d, okay? So you'll find this d sound in lots and lots of English words, things like door or dog or lad or fad, okay? Or bad at the end of words. So what I want to do is to practice this letter and this sound when it comes at the beginning of words, in the middle of words, and at the end of words. Why? Well, the truth is that even though this is one sound, d, it can be produced to different levels depending on where it is in the word. What do I mean? If this d is at the beginning of a word, we often say that it is stronger, okay? So in words like do and dog, the d sound at the beginning is very strong, okay? But in words like made, made and had, it's a little bit softer. Where the d is at the end, we can find that it's a bit softer. In words like rude, rude, or food. It's not food, food, okay? It's a little bit softer. In the middle, it can be both, okay? In words like ready, or idea, or already, okay? It can be a mix of both. Normally, it's strong, okay? Don't worry too much because the sound is the same. Both are d, d, d. 
The only difference is how strong you want to make that d sound. Okay, so remember, at the beginning of words, it's very strong, always. D, d, d. And at the end of words, you can say it, d, if you want. There is nothing wrong with that. But most native speakers tend to make it a little bit softer. Okay, so the difference between do and food. You'll notice that that final D, that D, is a little bit more like D, D than D at the beginning of a word. Okay? Okay, so let's practice that D at the beginning of words. In words like do, or day, or dance, or dinosaur. Okay? At the beginning of words, remember, it's a strong D sound. So, practice with me. Do, day. Dance, dinosaur, also deer, deer, and dock, dock, and dog, dog, okay? Now let's practice the d in the middle of words, in things like body, body, today, today, idea, idea, ready, ready and steady, steady, okay? You'll notice that it's still quite strong. And don't worry, as I said, you can make it as strong or as weak as you want. Everybody will understand you, okay? Ready, steady, idea, today, already, okay? Really good words to practice. Okay, let's practice that d at the end of words now. You'll find this sometimes at the beginning and at the end of words in words like did and dad. Here you can really hear the difference. The, the first d sound in da and then a little bit softer at the end. D, dad, dad and did, did. Okay, did, did. But also at the end of words like old, old or gold or cold, or bed, or head, or fed, okay? It's a nice little soft d sound at the end, d. Not the same as dead, where the d at the beginning is stronger than the d at the end. Dead. Listen carefully. Dead. 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 Okay, can you hear the tiny little difference between the really strong D at the beginning and the slightly softer D at the end? Okay, try this practice sentence with me. Diego did do some study in his bedroom. Diego did do some study in his bedroom. Most of the words in that sentence, the D is at the beginning or in the middle. So it should be lots of strong D sounds. Listen again. Diego did do some study in his bedroom. Diego did do some study in his bedroom. Diego did do some study in his bedroom. Why don't you try? Listen and repeat. Diego did do some study in his bedroom. One more time. Diego did do some study in his bedroom. Okay, well done. Try this one. Dan's dad did a difficult dance. Dan's dad did a difficult dance. There's a few words in here where the D is at the beginning and at the end. So you should be able to practice that hard D and soft D here. Dan's dad did a difficult dance. Dan's dad did a difficult dance. Try it again. Dan's dad did a difficult dance. Your turn. One more time. Dan's dad did a difficult dance. A little bit slower. Dan's dad did a difficult dance. Okay, well done. Okay, so the second way that we can pronounce this D letter is as a T, T. Okay, but, but when? When do we pronounce the letter D as a T? Luckily, it's really simple. We pronounce the letter D as a T in any regular past tense verb that 
ends with a voiceless consonant. A voiceless consonant is a consonant that is not made using your vocal cords. So take a verb like kick, kick. If we take the verb kick and we put it in the past tense, you'll notice it finishes ed, kicked. But you probably heard it doesn't have the d sound. It has a t sound, kicked, kicked. That ed here is a t sound, t sound. Why? The reason is because the k, k, k sound at the end of the word kick, can you hear that? Kick, k, k, k. The final sound is k, k, is a voiceless sound. There's no sound from our vocal cords. Kick. If any regular past tense verb finishes in a voiceless sound, then easy, you just need to use as the next sound. So let's look. Kick ends in k. So in the past it would be kicked, kicked, kicked. What about wish? Wish ends in sh, sh, sh is a voiceless sound. So what do we do? The d in ed becomes a t. Wish, wished, wish, wished. The same in kiss, which ends in a s. Kiss becomes kissed, kissed, okay? The same in help. Help ends in a p, 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 okay? A p sound. So help, ed on the end, changes to a t. Helped, helped, helped. Also in reach, as in to reach for something, Reach ends in that voiceless ch sound. Ch. So what do we do? We add a t in the past. Reached, reached, reached. Some more examples are place, which ends in that s sound again. Place becomes placed. Earth, earth, or even the, the really cool verb to unearth. It's one of my favorite verbs in English. To unearth something. To unearth something means to find it and discover something interesting. To unearth something. So if they find a mummy in a pyramid in Egypt, you would say they unearthed a mummy in a pyramid, okay? And you'll notice that earth and unearth ends in that th, that difficult th sound. Th, but it's voiceless. There's no vocal cords being used. So after that is a t again. In the past, unearthed, unearthed. Okay? So remember, past tense verbs that are regular, that means they end in ed. If the final sound of the original form, the infinitive form of the verb, is a voiceless sound, the next sound will be a t. Okay, that ed will always be a t, t. The only time this doesn't happen is when the verb ends in t. For example, want. Here, the final sound is already t. So we can't have two. We can't have t. -t. You can't say want. T. So here we have to add a second sound. We add i and we change it back to the d. Wanted. 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 Okay, wanted. Okay, so one more time, just remember past tense verbs that end in a voiceless sound, the infinitive is a voiceless sound, that ed will become a t sound. So there is where the d letter can be pronounced as a t, t. Let's practice a sentence with this one. Try this, I helped, he worked, she laughed, they wished and we kissed. All of those end in that t sound, okay? Go back and listen to that sentence as many times as you need to and listen for all of those t sounds on the end of those ed, ed verbs, okay? Practice that as many times as you need to. Okay, now for a little test to make sure that you understood everything I have just said. I'm going to give you five verbs 
in the present tense, okay? Not in the past. And I want you to think in the past, which one of these verbs would not, not have the t pronunciation, okay? Which one does not have the t pronunciation? That means that you should be thinking which one of these verbs ends in a voiced sound, not a voiceless sound. If you can see or hear which one of the following verbs ends in a voiced sound, you will be able to write in the comments below which one of these does not have a t sound in the past, in the past tense, okay? Let's have a look. Guess, guess, dance, dance, love, love, park, park, and shop, shop. Okay, can you tell me in the comments which one of those ends in a voiced sound, a voiced consonant, okay? If you know which one of those ends in a voiced consonant, you can tell me in the past which one does not have that t sound, okay? Good luck, write your answers in the comments. Let's look at the next way to pronounce this letter D. Okay, the next way that we can pronounce the letter D is a little bit less common, not so often, you won't see this so often as you will the D and T pronunciations, okay? But the third way that we can pronounce this letter D in English is as a J, J. If you know how to pronounce my name, James, James, that is the same sound that, that makes the first letter of my name J, J, J. You can also pronounce the letter D in English as a J, J, okay? Now, the letter D as a J, how do we make that sound? It's a little bit more difficult, okay? To make the J sound, you start with the D, the position of the D, so your tip of your tongue on the alveolar ridge, and then you take it down and put it into the position of the CH but it's all got to be done really, really quickly, okay? Watch closely. J, 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 okay? It is not the same as ch, ch, okay? And it is also not the same as sh, sh. This time, make sure you're starting that sound in the D position, d, d, but you go down to the CH or SH position. J, J, J. Make sure your vocal cords are vibrating too. J, J, J. Okay? So, when do we pronounce the D as a J? Luckily, it's quite rare, but examples would be words like soldier. Soldier, there aren't many other words in English with this pronunciation, okay? D, I. D-I, I think this is the only word in English that has D-I pronounced as a J, sol J. Normally, D-I is pronounced D in words like brigadier, brigadier, or grenadier, okay? So don't worry, this soldier is an exception to the rule, sol J. But it's worth remembering because it's quite a common word, soldier, soldier, as in someone in the army, sol J. J, soldier. Also, in words where D comes before a G, often after the G there's an E too, D, G, E. So words like edge or ledge or hedge or bridge or badge, okay? Try these. Bridge, as in thing that goes over the bridge. Bridge. Badge, something you wear. Badge. Badge. And edge, edge, edge. Many houses and gardens in England have a hedge around their garden, a hedge, hedge. Okay, it's quite difficult when this sound comes at the end of a word. He, j, j. Okay, make sure that your jaw is forward. J, j. It's much easier. J, j. Hedge, edge, ledge. Also, wedge wedge and badge, 
badge. Also in words where you can see the D followed by the letter J, like in adjust, adjust, j, 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 adjust, and also adjective, a very common word if you're studying English grammar. Adjective, 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 adjust and adjective. So remember the D followed by a J is often a single J, J, J sound. Adjective, okay? Also the D followed by the letter U in words like individual, difficult word, individual or procedure, procedure, or even education, education, and graduate, or graduate, 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 the verb and the noun, graduate and graduate, both have that D followed by the letter U, gradu, not gradu, don't make that mistake and have a D sound here, the D followed by the letter U, is a j, j, j sound. Graduate, education, individual, dual. Okay, well done. Try this practice sentence with me. The soldier gradually adjusted the bridge. The soldier gradually adjusted the bridge. One more time. The soldier gradually adjusted the bridge. Okay. Practice these sentences lots and lots of times because you probably know by now there are so many rules in English, it's hard to remember them all. But if you practice this sentence maybe 20 or 30 times, you will start to feel the correct sounds. Every time you hear soldier, 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 eventually, just like an English native speaker when they're growing up and learning the language, your brain will get a feeling for the correct sound. That will allow you to speak much, much more fluently in English, okay? It means that you don't have to think in your head of all the rules, okay? The more you think of all those rules, the slower you will speak and the less fluent you will be. So you might need some of the rules when you're a beginner, but the plan for you should be not to need those rules, okay? Native speakers don't know those rules. They just guess or instinctively, instinctively feel what the correct sound will be. Soldier, okay? The soldier gradually adjusted the bridge. Practice that as many times as you need to. Try this. In education, a graduate graduates from university. In education, a graduate graduates. Okay, try this. In education, a graduate graduates. And you'll get that gradu, gradu, edu, okay? The more you practice, the more you will begin to feel the correct sounds. Let's try one more. The lodge was near the edge of the ledge. The lodge was near the edge of the ledge. The lodge was near the edge of the ledge. Whoa, difficult one. Try it really fast. The lodge was near the edge of the ledge. The lodge was near the edge of the ledge. And you'll get that j, 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 j sound. Remember, tongue goes from d to ch. J, j, j. Lodge, edge, ledge. Well done. Okay, there's another way that we can pronounce or not pronounce the letter D. We've heard the three ways. The three ways to pronounce the letter D are D, T, and J. But we also have something called silent D, okay? This is a little bonus part to this lesson. When do we find a D that we don't say, that we don't pronounce in English? This one's really simple. When you see the letter D and it is in between two other consonants, usually, that D is silent. Take a look at the word handsome. In the word handsome, you'll see that D is in between two consonants. Han, so the N, then the D, and then an S. Two consonants and the D in the middle. So the D is silent. Handsome. We don't say handsome. We just say handsome, as in the handsome man the handsome man or the handsome teacher, okay? 
handsome. Also, in the word sandwich, sandwich. Most people don't say sandwich, sandwich. They just say sandwich because the D in the middle is silent. Sandwich, sandwich, not sandwich. Okay, so remember, silent D is usually found in between, that's in the middle of two other consonant sounds. Perfect examples are handsome and sandwich. Silent D can also be found in some exceptions, some special words. You probably know the word Wednesday. Wednesday. This is a crazy word in English, but it's very common because you use it every Wednesday, every week, okay? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We don't say Wednesday, we say Wednesday. Wednesday. There's a few silent letters in there. Wednesday. Wednesday. No D, no D sound. Wednesday, okay? Also, in family names, some family names. For example, grandma and grandpa and granddaughter and grandson, okay? Most people don't say grandson or granddaughter. In granddaughter, there are two Ds. The first one is silent. Daughter, of course, we need D. D daughter. But in grand there, we don't pronounce the D. We just say gran. Gran. Same in grandpa and grandma. We don't say grandpa because it's too difficult. It's very hard to say that. So grandpa and grandma. Grandson and granddaughter. Silent D all the time. And in the word Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. Try and remember those little exceptions. Okay. What about when we have words where there are two D letters together? Normally, when you see two D letters together, it's really easy. You just pronounce it as one D, D. So in words like middle and cuddle and add, you can see two letter Ds, two D letters, but we pronounce them as one D. Usually a strong D sound. Ad, ad, address, address, okay? Also, middle and cuddle and fuddle and fiddle, okay? But, as usual in English, there are exceptions to this rule, okay? The exceptions here are words like midday, midday, okay? In the word midday, you've got two Ds, okay? Midday. And in headdress, headdress. Something special can happen here though. In the first word, midday, you probably notice that that first D is a little bit too soft. We use something here called a glottal D. In this lesson, I'm not going to talk or teach you too much about what that is, but basically it means that the first D here is kind of half pronounced. We stop ourselves saying it. So we don't say mid-day, we say mid, and then we stop, and then day. Mid-day, we stop our throat. It's known as a glottal sound in English, a glottal stop, okay? Mid-day, head-dress, head-dress, okay? But it is also not wrong to pronounce both Ds, okay? Headdress or midday, okay? So remember, those are exceptions. We'll have a look at that glottal stop sound in another lesson another time. Let's go on to try some tongue twisters with the letter D. Okay, let's try some tongue twisters now with this letter D and all of the different ways to pronounce it. Try this. Dan the dinosaur danced until he died of dizziness. Dan the dinosaur danced until he died of dizziness. A little bit slower. Dan the dinosaur danced until he died of dizziness. Dizziness is when you spin round too many times. Dan the dinosaur danced until he died of dizziness. Okay, practice that one as fast as you can. Also, the verb do is great for practicing that d, the strong d sound in English, because when you 
open it up and you see all the different forms of this verb, you'll see that there are lots of different d sounds in there. Okay, so do, do, or does, does, or doesn't, doesn't, or did, did, and didn't, didn't. Also, doing, doing, and done, done. Okay, this lesson is nearly done. Practice all of that verb, do, did, doesn't, does, doing, done, and you'll be able to practice that strong d sound. Okay, try it. Do, does, doesn't, did, didn't, doing, done. <gasps> Lots of different d sounds there. Okay, practice that one as many times as you need to. Okay, as a final bonus to this lesson, we're going to practice some really long words in English to improve your pronunciation of long words, beginning with D. Okay, number one is deadliness. 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 This is how deadly, how bad or deadly something can be. Okay, a deadly animal. The deadliness. 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 Number two is deceitfulness. Deceitfulness. Another long word. Deceitfulness. Deceitfulness. Number three, our final word today, decentralization. Oh, that's a really long one. Decentralization. Decentralization. Now, look this up in a dictionary and see if you can write what is this in the comments decentralization decentralization okay well done one more thing if you want to practice the d and t sounds they can be tricky to hear the difference between these two sounds so check out words like and and ant okay remember the d sound is the same as the t sound but the d sound is made in your vocal cords. So look at and and ant and practice them together. And, ant, and, ant, and, ant, okay? Well done. Okay, thank you very much for joining me today for this lesson. I hope that you learned something useful. If you did find this lesson helpful, make sure that you hit that like button and you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of my future videos, okay? If you know anybody that would be helped by this lesson, make sure you share this video so that other students can also improve their English, okay? Thank you again for joining me and I'll see you again for the letter E, which is our next lesson, okay? Bye-bye.